A warm welcome from uh, behalf of myself. My name is Wolfgang. I'm in this business now since you know, around 21 years. And everything started at the age of 25. Um, when I was uh, 26, sorry, at the age of 26, when I was diagnosed with cancer, um, which hit me out of nothing. Um, it uh, happened on a, I think it was even a Friday afternoon, um, that um, I felt a little knot here in my hip and I, I became a little bit nervous because, you know, I didn't know it should not be there, so I went to the doctor and he examined it and uh, it turned out to be um, something which should be cut out immediately. So I literally had a, a surgery right away with a, with a local anesthesia in my spine and this little knot here appeared as the tumor with the size of a fist and it grew in here over probably months or years without uh, without uh, creating any, any negative effects so that I should become aware of it in advance. However, the, you know, the pathologist um, told that I was suffering from a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It was stage three at that time. So I didn't know that, but now <laughs> today I know because I, I learned a lot about all these kind of diseases that I was statistically 70% dead. And um, this is not such an amusing message, especially when you don't feel that you are ill, because I really didn't feel anything. So, I, uh, long story short, I went through the whole classical medical protocols. They did a second surgery on me. They cut me off from here to here. They took out the entire lymph string here to make sure that they catch all eventual metastasis. I went through a full stage of chemotherapy and this took about three and a half months until I left the hospital. And this picture on the left side, this was made one week after I left the hospital because I could not deal with ill people anymore. So I went to, I was flying to Florida to Disney, Disney World just to have a good time. And I was about uh, 35 kilos uh, lighter than I usually should be. And um, yeah, and you know, the, the challenge with a chronic disease like cancer is that when, when you are treated, when you went through the whole protocols, then you never know whether or, or when or if this cancer will come back. And you are alone in this world. Nobody is, is helping you once you leave the hospital. Uh, nobody gives you advice what you should do, where you should go. And um, I think this was more or less the, the, uh, the topic which bothered me the most, that I, I, I had to live now with something, uh, something like a time bomb inside myself, and I never knew, uh, would knew when this breaks out again. And uh, that even till today, I mean, I, uh, I have... This year, I'm going to celebrate my 25th cancer-free anniversary. I'm going to say this. <clears throat> so, but still, when I feel something not right in my body, and I cannot track it to a certain disease, or, or, to, or, or the, I cannot figure out what's going on, my cancer body is coming back inside myself. And, and, and then you become a little bit nervous. Of course, you learn to control this situation over time and you become a little bit less nervous however but it, it's you live with it probably the whole life uh, so um, what's good about these diseases actually when I talk about my individual personal cases that I started asking questions to myself after I left the hospital what can I do to stay proactive or to become proactive. When you are 25, you don't think about disease. This is crystal clear. You think about parties, about girls, about everything what a 25-year-old guy thinks about. 
And and then you suddenly realize, wow, you are you are just you know you 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 were seventy percent dead. Now they helped you, but you don't know in which direction your life is going is is, is going to go. And I really realized for myself that um, education might be the key, because it was funny when I left the hospital, and of course everybody was aware what's going on with me. You know how it is, <laughs> yeah. So this goes like crazy. And then you come home, and then all these people approach you and said, "Oh, I heard about your your disease. I, I'm sorry. I have a good idea. You should see this doctor. I have a specialist. He he already cured ca uh, people who suffer from cancer and so on. I have some supplements. You should take this. I have this and that and this and that. If I would probably go after every single advice and eat and drink everything what uh, what was referred to me, I would not be alive anymore. <laughs> who knows? But the biggest problem is how can I determine what's good and what's not so good for me? So, and, 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 and education is the key. And that's probably also the reason why you all came tonight. Because, you, you, of course, you want to hear something about this machine or whatsoever, you know how it works. But I think the main idea, most of you have a, 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 an issue health-wise. And you probably also heard about these stories already. You went through the supplements, you went through this and that, um, or you are an athlete who is looking for more better performance. This is all uh, also uh, um, an audience we address our products to. Um, we have even people who don't want to become ill, so they use it for prevention, which is a pretty cool idea. <laughs> because that's the cheapest and safest way uh, to stay healthy, is not to become ill. <laughs> uh, it makes sense. <laughs> so, so prevention is something which more and more people, um, um, you know, take note and, and, and they want to they wanna become proactive. They figure out that something is wrong in our society that more and more diseases break out where the classical medical system has no answers, no cure, or maybe doesn't diagnose correctly whatsoever, you know? I'm personally not against classical medicine because without my surgeon cutting out the tumor, I would probably not be here anymore. So don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not against classical medicine. But we face a lot of diseases nowadays which are, in my opinion, 90% environmentally related due to the big changes what happens in our environment. Um, socially, uh, naturally, you can look in, in each faculty, you will find 20 reasons why we not function anymore like we should. And, you know, education is the key. You need to know what's going on. And that's what I did. I, I you know, I started educating myself. And believe me, 20, uh, 26 years ago, education was not so easy. There was no Google. You know, you had to go in a library to read books. You had to visit uh, fairs, uh, health expos, um, uh, lectures, and so on and so on to collect information. And um, I did that. And I, I, I mean, I, I, I got to know it about 25 years. A lot of these holistic modalities, they, they, they came off the ground, you know, or, or, or they, they, even, they even experienced a renaissance because they were, they were forgotten, like Ayurveda from India and all that stuff, you know. This is uh, ancient healing which was forgotten or suppressed, you know, depending on in, in, in which country it was and from, from where it came from. But um, there's a lot of good stuff out, but if you are not educated, how can you figure out if it works for you or what is behind all that? So um, I, I went through all this and, uh, and I was on one lecture, it was in Austria. Um, I was born and raised in Bavaria, so it, I'm very close to the Austrian border. So I went there and there was a guy talking about PMF, pulsed electromagnetic fields. And uh, very enthusiastic. And this was around the time when the first units, machines, systems, however you call them, appeared on the market for home use. And the basic science, this is also interesting, is not coming from the medical world, it's coming from the physical world. You know, the first prototype, PMF prototype, was developed in the Technical University in Munich. 
Professor Dr. Warnke, and he figured out that if you expose a past electromagnetic field with a certain frequency range, with a certain intensity range, um, on human beings, that they start <laughs> fall asleep. So the first prototype was called the sleeping machine. Uh -huh. And the first indication for PMF was discovered. Because it, it's a, it, it was and it is still probably the, the, the choice number one for people suffering from insomnia. And it works really well, even if you don't believe in it. Just need to lie on it, it works, you know. With most, even right at the first application, after a couple of minutes. So, and, and nowadays we know about every third person on this planet suffers from sleeping problems. So that's a big thing. And um, I bought one of these machines because I figured out that's something really good. It is very convenient because I can do it in the comfort of my home. It is not dangerous. So the, the PMF, low-pass PMF devices, they do not harm you. Even if you forget to turn them off and you lie them on them the whole night, it would not harm you, you know? So, and, uh, and you can do it consistently, like I said, in the comfort of your home without going in a doctor's office every day, which takes a lot of efforts and the weather and the traffic and all that. Overall, it was just perfect for me. And because of the chemotherapy, I was also suffering from insomnia. And uh, this is a very pleasant combination when you're already below the carpet because they cut you off, they take everything out, and you are energetically at zero, and then you cannot sleep anymore. So by utilizing this um, technology, I became better, not right away. It took me about six weeks until I had my first night sleeping through, but it was a breakthrough for me. And uh, from that day, I remember that when I woke up, I felt for the first time after months that my body was capable of responding to an external therapy. And then I realized, wow, if your body is responding, that means your body is, still wants to stay alive. You, you know what I mean. Uh, so there is, there is interest <laughs> from your system. Uh, I had days I didn't want to stay alive anymore because I saw no reason anymore, because I was just not myself. And this was the turnaround. And from that day, I did nothing else. I did not take any supplements. I, I always ate healthy because I was born and raised in a village with 700 people in the, mid, in the middle of the Alps. And... 25 years ago, we still had organic food without even knowing that it was organic food. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now we must <laughs> hunt for organic food. And 50% of the organic food that we buy that is labeled organic food is not organic food. It's labeled organic food. So again, we have to educate ourselves to differentiate between all these labels and what's really organic and what's really good and what's bad for us. And education is the key. And because of my personal experience, um, I got intrigued about this technology. And I started again to research on my own. And I figured out that uh, uh, past electromagnetic fields or electromagnetic fields in, in general um, is a very old form of healing very ancient form of healing. Even the Greeks, you know, 2,000 years ago, the Greek healers, they had these so-called magnes litos, that means magnetic stones. And they, they grabbed these stones and they were moving it around the patients. Because they figured out when they just put it on a patient, it has only a very short effect, and then the effect diminishes again. However, when they start moving those magnetic stones, the effect became lasting. And that's why we use nowadays pulsed electromagnetic fields and no static magnetic fields, because we know that pulsed electromagnetic fields create more attention from our organism in order to create counteracting um, uh, results. Pretty interesting. So what I did was nothing new. 
but it was not established in the classical medical world. And this, there is also a reason why. Because even till today, energy medicine is not part of the faculty of classical medicine. You know, and if a doctor has no education about quantum physics, about energy medicine, how, he, how can he or she provide you with a treatment modality? It's just not, impossible. Again, no education. That's the problem. Uh, go to your, uh, do we have a doctor here? Can I ask? Or, uh, or MD? I have no problem. <laughs> we will not shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, no, but if you have a, a cardiologist in your environment, go to a cardiologist and ask him or her why there is no heart cancer in the world. It's a pretty cool question. Heart cancer does not exist. There are very rare cases, but those cases are uh, connected to um, to DNA problems, so to genetic problems. But it looks like that the cancer is, uh, the, the, the heart is not able to turn into a malignant situation. And can you imagine what could be the reason for this? Well, it's energy. It's energy because the heart is the only organ which has its own electromagnetic generator. Uh, and the, the, the fact is, or the quintessence on, on this is, that the, the heart cell is always working on the highest possible level. And it will never have the time, the chance to turn into a malignant situation. You know, um, cancer can only um, appear when when, when, when one or more of our body cells, they reach a certain critical membrane potential so that they are not able to do their job anymore. And then they, they get bored. And then after a while, when they are really bored, they say, oh, I need to do something. And then they start developing this self-destructing problem, what we what we know as cancer. It's uncontrolled cell growth. Which means the lack of oxygen? That's so, for sure, yeah. But, but lack, lack of oxygen is, uh, is only one of the, 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 yeah, the triggers which leads to a lower membrane potential. But in general, when the membrane potential is low, for whatever reasons, for whatever reasons, everyday McDonald's, what, it doesn't matter then, you know, the cell is not able to do its job anymore, and then it may, under certain circumstances, turn into a bad situation, which we know as cancer. And cancer is rising. Uh, who has no cancer case in their environment? Every day we hear about them. It's dramatic. It's really dramatic. And there is a reason for it. And the reason is not that we are changing so much, the main reason is that our environment is changing so much and we get so much affected by. And I think to understand what's going on with us and to understand how we can defend ourselves, how we can uh, become proactive and do something for our health, that's, that's what I'm doing since 21 years, doing these lectures, thousands of lectures, universities, lay people, uh, health fairs all over the world, really all over the world. And um, not talking about the machines. The machine is, yeah, this is the, the carrier. But you have to understand what happens when you lie on su such a machine. And this is the idea what I'm hopefully bring a little bit closer to you tonight to make it easy and simple to understand why pulse electromagnetic fields are vital for you, are essential for you, and are good for you and help you to stay healthy or to become healthy again. As I did, I did nothing by the side. I would never say that this technology healed my cancer because I cannot, I have no proof for this. And I don't care because I'm here, I'm alive. You know, at the end you don't care if everything works out, you know. But I know what I did 
to come to this point, to stand here in front of you tonight and to share my knowledge, my wisdom, my experiences with you. This is what counts and nothing else.